Before heading into the video, I want to give a special thank you to Sparsh, the owner of this Miata, for being so down to make this video with me and make everything possible. He even taught me how to drive manual after shooting this video. I learned a lot and I had a ton of fun. Thank you again. And now, let's get into the review. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the 2002 Mazda NB Miata. This is Sparsh's car, and because I don't know how to drive a manual, Sparsh will be talking about how the car drives and how it feels overall. Yeah, looking forward to it. Without further ado, let's get into how this car drives. Why I like this car so much yeah. is just how transparent and raw it is. Mm. Like all the control points, the steering wheel, like the shifter, the brakes, the gas pedal, everything has like a very mechanical feel, kind of very direct feeling. From that perspective, it's kind of a very honest car. Like the engine does exactly what you tell it to do. Mm -hmm. Same with the steering, same with the brakes. There's no delay, basically. Mm -hmm. And that feels nice. Like yeah. I, I, I didn't feel yeah. like that in any other car before. Mm -hmm. It's also kind of partly a manual thing. It's not a lot of power. It's just very responsive. Like you press a gas pedal and it responds instantly. Yeah, it's still a slow car. It would be around the same as like a Prius oh. in a straight line. It gets the job done, and especially because yeah. it's a really light car. Yeah. yeah, when I drove that ND automatic, mm -hmm. I was driving like 20 miles per hour and it felt like 40 or 50. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I think comparing, because I've, I've driven an ND as well, I would say this car is first off louder. Like everything is louder. Like the road noise, mm -hmm. the vibrations are kind of, you know, more noticeable. Yeah. So the ND is definitely more comfortable and a little more refined. And it's definitely a good bit faster than this yeah. car. But I, I do like the steering of this car a lot. If I turn the steering, the engine starts to struggle. It's that, like everything is so simple in this car. Like, cause it's okay. a hydraulic pump and you feel like every pothole or anything that you drive over, you feel the feedback. The wheel kind of feels alive, especially at like higher speeds. Like at low speeds, it's not that different. That's another thing that kind of like got me very like into, into this car. Yeah. The hydraulic ste steering, this has a little bit of slot. It's a little bit, tiny bit like big. But yeah. the advantage of uh, hydraulic steering is just the feedback. And so that, oh. yeah, I, I do really like the feeling of that. You're never confused about what the car is doing. Another thing about like this car Miatas in general with like the stick shift is that you have a limited slip differential in the back, which is good for like if you're going around corners while pressing the gas pedal, you'll have more uh, grip from the rear wheels. Oh. You feel that a lot of times. Like, if you're on like a back mountain road, like, yeah. you know, tight twisty like roads, yeah. it definitely feels grippier. It's kind of surprising. Most situations, you know, this car doesn't have a whole lot of grip, but when you do uh, go around those corners, it feels more than you expect. Also, I just noticed the road noise it's a back lot. here is very loud. It's a lot. Yeah. We're, we're kind of on the freeway ish speeds earlier and it was really loud yeah <laughs> i didn't not expect a long that distance. yeah i wouldn't do long distances in this car have you done long distance in this car i think the most i've driven this car is like a two to three hour drive okay. and it was it does get tiring oh. i would say like getting like earmuffs or something <laughs> would be ideal and it's also the gearing in this car at 70 miles an hour in like the top gear mm -hmm. the engine is at like almost 4,000 RPM. So it's just mm. always kind of yeah. just screaming. What's the transmission? So this has a five speed. There was okay. a six speed. Mm. People have like differing opinions on which one's better. I think the six speed is definitely more everyday friendly, but the five speed is a, known to be a little more durable. Mm. Yeah, a bit of a compromise. Another thing I really like about this car is the, the brake pedal. It's still like very normal. Like it's nothing that's unusual to get used to, mm. but there's not a lot of brake travel. You judge it by like how hard you're pressing the pedal, mm. which is a lot better in my opinion than like, pedals that move in a lot it's kind of tight there's not a lot of slop i think the best part about this car is the feeling of lightweightness like if just talking about the handling mm -hmm. like going around corners it you really feel the immediacy i like the fact that this car doesn't have abs or traction control so oh. there ha there's no driver safety in this car <laughs> uh, of any kind which which is what makes it makes it raw. possible it's yeah it's very raw so yeah. that's why the brake pedal feels the way it does yeah. is that there's no uh there's no electronics in the way. Same with the, the gas pedal. In modern cars, 
your gas pedal is nothing but like a digital input to the computer. Mm. And the computer decides okay. how much to open the, the throttle of the engine. Yeah. In this car, there's a literal like a cable like in a, in a bicycle. You're like, literally the controlling the, the parts throttle. that yeah, exactly. do what the car does. So when you when you like put your foot on the, the brake or yeah. on the gas pedal, for example, you can feel the like the vibration of the engine because it's directly connected to it. That's cool. Yeah, wow. so in the rain or like in like terrible conditions, this car does get very sketchy. <laughs> but I, I kind of enjoy that and I also uh, don't tend to drive it that often in uh -huh. bad conditions anyway. Me and like another a couple of my like car friends, we sometimes like if it's like a good day, we yeah. like to, you know, drive to like north of SF. Okay. And so like having the top down on like a good sunny day, it's nothing beats it, you know. All the Miatas of this generation um, are soft tops and hard tops. You can turn any car into a soft top or a hard top. But you know, the, the advantages are, you know, you, you get a quieter car, it's safer. Oh, I don't know if you hear that. The rattle? The rattle? Yeah. So at three and a half thousand RPM, if you let go of the gas pedal, what is that? that's the exhaust pipe that goes. Oh, wow. Down and you and can that's, hear that. In every, and that's in every Miata. That's every crazy. Sin, not just this generation, it even lasts in the ND Miata. Wow. And it's at the same RPM. I was like, how do you manage this for like 20 years? 30 years. on purpose? It's like I seal that brakes over time. And it, oh. it like, it gets loosened. When I drove uh, the ND Miata, yeah. I noticed the same thing. Oh my gosh. And then I got this car and I was like, God, it's, so this has it too. Also, the higher you rev the car, yeah. the the more the easier it is to shift. So everything in this car like wants to go faster. That's another thing. Like it just feels more comfortable to drive the harder you drive. The steering wheel is lighter at like high speeds than at low speeds. This car has the attitude of a sports car, but no ability. Like, <laughs> that's so ability. funny. Yeah, that's what I like about this car. You can be like you can feel like a sports car, but not actually be driving at speed. I like that too. Like, I am not a person that drives fast at all. So, with a car that can feel fast and fun, but yeah. not actually going fast, that's great to me. You wouldn't yeah. find this kind of suspension. It's called like the double wishbone up front and then multi link okay. in the back. Mm -hmm. And so, you don't find that kind of system in anything like other than like less than like 50,000 or like cars. Mm -hmm. Even Porsche, for example, the 911. Mm -hmm. The first car to have like double wishbone up front was this year's like Porsche. Oh, wow. So for they've always had strut, which is like a cheaper version of like suspension. But what that did is that like you got a really nice light, small, and like stiff chassis. But then they saved the money on everything else. They put a terrible engine. They knew it. Like they were like, this is this engine we put it in all of our other cars. You know, it's a parts bin. They cheaped out on the interior, cheaped out on the transmission, so that whoever wants to work on it, they can. And then there's enough space to put like a five, six liter V8 in the in the front compartment. Oh, wow. So that's that's another thing. Like you look at this car, it doesn't seem that big, mm -hmm. and like most cars, like double the size of this car, don't have enough space in the engine bay to put any bigger engine than it what it comes with. Mm -hmm. But this car, you can put like a Corvette like engine in it. Now let's talk about the exterior. I love the little cute smile in the front, though not as cute as the NA with the pop-up headlights. It even has fog lights, which is nice. And I love the classic red paint color. I think it's one of the best Miata colors. It fits the bubbly exterior vibe of this car. I like the very simple side profile, the beige soft top, and the back, again, looks very simple, classic, nothing wrong with it at all. And here we have the simple looking side again, and of course, we have the soft top. Like Sparse said, you can make any Miata in the NB generation a soft top or a hard top. It's interchangeable. And now we have the cute little smile again, and I just love how Miatas look. They're just cute little fun cars. I also want to highlight the bare metal gas cap. I thought it was very cool and unique. 
Sparsh also pointed out to me the very cartoonish thing about this car. Oh goodness, Take a look at this why? antenna. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is this, this looks kind of outrageous. And here is how the trunk looks like. We actually have quite a bit of stuff in here compared to how big or small I should say the car is. This trunk is wider than the one in the ND but less deep. But it doesn't really matter because once you have that top down, you have infinite amount of space. Now let's talk about the interior. Starting off with the hydraulic pump steering wheel. It's thin, it's classy, it's simple. It doesn't even have any buttons. To the left of the steering wheel, we have the stock for the turn signals and light switches. On the right, we have the stock for the windshield wipers and cruise control settings. Up front, of course, we have the gauge cluster. To the left, we have the fuel gauge, then the tachometer, and in the middle is your oil pressure, and at the bottom, it should tell you the odometer. My apologies for not having that footage, because this 2002 NB Miata only has about 44,000 miles. Anyway, to the right is the speedometer and the coolant gauge. On the left of the gauge cluster, you have this very cute little air vent. Below that, you have some buttons. The first button is the fog light switch. Cruise main is to enable your cruise controls, and to the right is the gauge cluster brightness adjuster. On the opposite side is your side mirror adjusters. Moving on to the door panel. I like that it's beige or brown matching with the seat color as well as the soft top. And there's really not much going on here. You have the lock button, door handle, and this little pocket here that just fits something like a mask. And we do have the Bose audio sound system here. According to Sparsh, it sounds really good for the day and age of this car. And we do have this tiny little sun visor here, and I tested if it extends, and of course it does not, but that is okay for how small this car is. Let's talk about the seats. According to Sparsh, he's not a huge fan of the seats because they don't have enough bolstering, for a sports car especially. His VW Golf has more bolstering than these. He also feels that there's no real back support and it's too concavey. In terms of the seating position, he feels like it's meant to be for someone with a long torso. He can't have both good spacing at the legs for reaching the pedals and good enough distance from the steering wheel at the same time. You would have to choose one over the other. So these seats are not great for long distance driving. In my experience sitting in the passenger seat, I thought it was fine but I defer to the driver's opinion. And moving on, we do have two air vents in the middle. They're so cute, so little, but according to Sparsh, at high speeds, they're so flimsy that they actually move positions. And actually, the airflow is really great, especially when you turn off the air circulation, wind just blows at you as if you have the AC on. And down here, we have a very simple and old school head unit. It of course has a CD player, which is very refreshing to see. And below that, we have a very simple climate control system with all the knobs and buttons. And these knobs are so little. They're so cute. They remind me of those miniature playsets that children have. And I love it. And we do have a cigarette port for your needs. And to the left, you can see that it says passenger airbag. And yeah, this generation has airbags, which is really nice as the Miatas prior to 1994 did not have passenger airbags. And here we have the very mechanical feeling shifter for the five speed manual, as well as a manual parking brake. Behind the shifter is your window switches. And I thought that was a really interesting placement. Behind we do have actual cup holders, unlike the inserts in the ND Miata. And as you can see, the front one does not fit my water bottle. However, I'm happy to report that the back one does. And here we have an actual center console. It's not big at all to be expected, but it does fit a couple of CDs, which is really handy. And interestingly, inside of the center console, you have your latches for the trunk as well as the gas cap. And we do actually have a glove box as well, and it's actually really decently sized. Behind the seats, you have this hidden storage area. You can put some random loose stuff in there or, I don't know, small groceries. And because we have a soft top, let's show you how to open it and close it. So you have to flip out the sun visors and then undo the latches on either side of them and push them down. And that's it. And then to close the top back up, you can be strong and cool like Sparsh and be inside of the car. 
and pull that top all the way back up and then engage the latches once again. However, one thing to note is that the latches don't make a noise when you close them. It doesn't make a click or anything. So you just kind of have to make sure they're all the way in. So based on Sparsha's ownership experience and my passenger experience, I think the NV Miata is a fun little car that's affordable, reliable, and not one that you have to drive fast to feel it's fun. I obviously also love the cute exterior and interior. What do you think of the NV Miata? Which Miata generation is your favorite? Comment down below your thoughts and stay tuned for more car and car detailing videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.